Welcome back to our fourth video in our three-part series. Yeah, I know. That doesn't make much sense to me either. But we've been talking about cellular respiration, where we've been using our cellular fuel glucose and burning it in the presence of oxygen to generate ATP, approximately 36. But what happens in an anaerobic environment when we don't have oxygen? And what would a cell do if it lacked mitochondria, where most of respiration occurs? Well, the answer is fermentation. Fermentation is a simpler and faster alternative to cellular respiration. It allows us to burn glucose without oxygen and without complex organelles like mitochondria. Fermentation is a catabolic pathway that breaks down glucose for ATP. It's anaerobic, like we said. It occurs in the cytoplasm, requires no special organelles. It's a set of reactions that occurs in two stages glycolysis, and what we're going to call for now waste product formation. Now we've already spent a lot of time on glycolysis, in fact we already looked at a video and if you want to see that video, the more detailed look at glycolysis, click right over here. But for now I'm just going to run through a quick version of glycolysis, uh, just running through the steps. So in the first step we split glucose into two PGL, phosphoglyceraldehyde, and that costs us two ATP in our energy investment step. The two PGAL are converted to BPGL when we reduce NAD plus into NADH. The BPGL are then converted to PGA, phosphoglycerate, and we produce the first two of our ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. And in the final step, the PGA are converted into 2 pyruvate, and we make two more ATP for a net profit of 2 ATP. Like I said, if you want a more detailed uh, description of how this occurs, go back to our video that we did on glycolysis. The link's over here. Now, at the end of glycolysis, we have two pyruvate. And then those two pyruvate can enter in what we call fermentation. And fermentation comes in a lot of different variations. Uh, we can see uh, all these different end products of the different types of fermentation. But for our purposes, we're going to focus in on two, lactic acid fermentation and alcoholic fermentation. Let's compare the two just by looking at their formulas. In alcoholic form, uh, fermentation, we break down glucose into alcohol, ethanol, we get two carbon dioxides as a product, and we make a profit of two ATP for every one glucose. In lactic acid fermentation, we take that same glucose and we break it down into lactate or lactic acid and produce again two ATP. So let's take a closer look at the details, and we'll do alcoholic fermentation first. So we need an organism that does alcoholic fermentation. How about yeast? Yeast does alcoholic fermentation. In fact, it's because yeast produces carbon dioxide that it makes bread dough rise, and it's the ethanol or alcohol that yeast produces as a waste product that makes alcoholic beverages alcoholic. So let's look at the metabolic pathway. We start with glycolysis. This is step one of all fermentation uh, reactions. And I've condensed glycolysis here in this diagram uh, from glucose, and I skipped all the way to the end to pyruvate. We see our two NADH being produced and a net profit of two ATP. I've just skipped the intermediate details. In the second stage of fermentation, if it's alcoholic fermentation, the two pyruvates are converted into two molecules of aldehyde. And in doing so, we release two carbon dioxide then the two aldehydes are converted into ethanol by the oxidation of NADH to NAD+. So we call this second stage alcohol formation. So glycolysis followed by alcohol formation. So let's summarize. Here we have the overall formula. It's anaerobic, we need no oxygen. It's in the cytoplasm, we need no organelles. It comes in two stages. Glycolysis, where we break down glucose into two pyruvate molecules, producing two NADH and yielding two ATP. And then alcohol formation. The two pyruvate are converted into two aldehydes, while two carbon dioxides are released. Then the two aldehydes are converted into two ethanol by oxidizing two NADH into two NAD+. The two waste products of this reaction are carbon dioxide and alcohol, which both diffuse from the cells. Well, this raises an interesting question. Why? Why do stage two? Let's look back at the uh, flow chart here. Everything that we're going to get kind of on the positive side from fermentation 
we get from glycolysis. The whole point of fermentation was to get energy out of um, glucose and we only are going to earn 2 ATP and we have those 2 ATP by the end of glycolysis. And so we might as well just stop here at pyruvate. What's the point of making two molecules, carbon dioxide and ethanol, which are waste products and not used by the cell? Well, I'm going to give you a hint. You see, the alcohol formation stage of this uh, allows us to regenerate NAD plus for glycolysis. We've been uh, reducing NAD plus during glycolysis to make NADH. After a while, we have a limited supply of NAD+, and so if we don't oxidize the NADH to return the NAD+, back to glycolysis, we can't do this part at the top over and over again. And let's do one more interesting thing. Let's compare fermentation to cellular respiration. We see that in cellular respiration we use oxygen, and our energy yield is 18 times greater. So the question is, where's the rest of the energy up here? How do we get so much more energy out of glucose here? And the answer is, the energy is left behind in ethanol. Ethanol is a high energy molecule. How high energy? Well, you can run race cars on it. That's pretty high energy. Without the complex machinery of an organelle like mitochondria, we're not able to tap into all the energy that's available in this glucose, and we just leave it behind in ethanol. Now let's look at lactic acid fermentation. Here's the formula. Glucose breaks down into lactic acid, and we get a profit of 2 ATP. So here we have glycolysis again in a shortened version, glucose to pyruvate, making 2 NADH, and a profit of 2 ATP. In lactate formation, the 2 pyruvate are converted into two molecules of lactate, or lactic acid. And again, we should see that the only reason to have this second reaction is to regenerate NAD plus for glycolysis the type of fermentation that a cell employs, you know, whether it be alcoholic or lactate form, uh, fermentation, lactic acid fermentation, really depends on the type of cell and the enzymes that it has available. But one interesting thing is that muscle cells have the ability to do lactic acid fermentation. Now ideally, muscle cells would do cellular respiration, where for every one uh, glucose molecule you'd get 36 ATP because in lactic acid fermentation for every one glucose you only make 2 ATP so our yield is much much lower and so when you're running your cells on lactic acid fermentation you're going to run out of energy pretty quick uh, I snapped this little photo of myself working out the other day um, <clears throat> I don't believe that um, but uh, muscle cells are facultative anaerobes that means when oxygen's available they'll use it so as, as much as you can deliver oxygen to your muscles, the more efficiently you can burn glucose, 36 ATP for every one glucose. But in times of oxygen dead, instead of muscle cells being uh, having no uh, ATP production, they can switch over to lactic acid fermentation and at least get 2 ATP for every one glucose rather than zero. So to wrap up, I have a couple questions. What's the purpose of fermentation? If Fermentation is a fast, easy way to get ATP without oxygen and without requiring complex organelles. Then why is there a slower, more complex process involving oxygen? I think we kind of just hinted at that. In aerobic respiration, the alternative to fermentation, we break down molecules to get uh, much more to get more energy out of them. And the leftover products have no useful energy left in them. Uh, remember our byproducts of cellular respiration were just water and carbon dioxide. Comparing that to the fact that race cars can use alcohol as fuel, I think we can see a difference. So that does it on our series on respiration and fermentation. Review the videos and uh, send questions if you have them.